All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, you already know what time it is. And right here, right now, I would proudly love to welcome back onto the Canadian FM dial DJ Lord Jazz of Lords of the Underground right here Woo! live on the line, man. How are you doing this evening? Man, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great, man. I'm, I'm glad to be back on the airwaves with you. And um, I'm really feeling great, man, because it's, it's football season and my team won a day. Go Browns. Hey, man, you can never go wrong with the Cleveland Browns, man. Down here in Canada, <laughs> down here in Canada, everyone thinks we're a hockey side of things, man. But I, I do personally yeah. love my football as well, man. I, I, I'm i actually a Saints fan, but I'm here in Canada, so hey. I can't really talk football because I'm Canadian, so I love them all. <laughs> right, right, right. It's all good. It's all good. But, Jazz, I know you're a busy guy, man, so I'm going to dive into this interview. And I do know our first broadcast, we touched base on, like, you know, what got you into the industry, how you're yourself and, and Lords of the Underground got together and whatnot. So right. I'm, I'm not going to go through all that again. If the listeners do want to hear that, they can always re-listen to our first broadcast. But I want to kick things off, man, with where you guys actually were featured on LL Cool J's album, 14 Shots of the Dome, on the song uh, No Front and Allowed. I was wondering if you can actually tell our listeners... Just this story behind this encounter, and of course, what was it like just being able to work alongside LL Cool J? Um, well, you know what, man? The, the first time when we went to Molly's house, LL was there. And, you know, they were mixing Mama Said Knock You Out. So, I mean, just, just walking up in there, man, and, and seeing LL, and, and Heavy D was actually there also, rest in peace. And, um, you know, just to have these, these, these hip-hop giants in the place of where we, you know, were recording was uh, monumental for us, man. And um, and how we got to do the um, that song with L is that, man, we, we were so hot back then. Um, you know, L wanted to do, you know, a song with us. And um, he he got with uh, Molly and, and do it all and Mr. Funky. And, um, you know, they came up came up with that joint, man, and they knocked it out, and, you know, we, we got the, the plaques for that and everything, man, it, it, was, it was beautiful, it was beautiful, just working with L was, was like a dream come true, man. And when you said a few moments ago about how you had the opportunity to actually, uh, you know, hear the mix of Mama Said Knock You Out, did you get the yeah. opportunity to hear the full song while, while you were actually there? Man, you know what? We were there, but we were just so in, in awe, man. Like, we were upstairs in, in um, Studio C. All we could hear was, you know, the, the, the bass thumping, you know, through the walls, you know, upstairs. You know, we, we didn't want to go downstairs and interrupt anything, but, you know, we, we were just, you know, there. Um, you know, we, we felt the moment, man. We felt the moment while we were there. We weren't actually in the studio with, with L and Molly. But um, we definitely felt the rumblings throughout the house of hits. Yeah. And also as well, by the end of 1993, you guys actually won an award from the BET for Best Rap Group of the Year. I was wondering if you can actually tell our listeners the story behind this eventful night. And of course, what was it like just being able to receive such a prestigious award, uh, sorry, award so early on in your guys' career? Right. I mean, it, it felt great, man, to get an award from, from our peers and, and uh, our fans, um, just, you know, for the love and the support of, of the hard work that we put in, man. Um, when we got that award, that was when the, the awards weren't on television yet. Like, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't on TV yet. So it, everything was just live, you know. It was just live, and it wasn't on TV until I think maybe the the year after, or maybe even two years after that. But you know, just to to be there and and and, and the place with you know your peers, you know, you got Tribe Called Quest, Wu Tang Clan, you know, Outkast. I mean, everybody w was there, man. And for us to um, get that award was um, it was big for us. It was big. And you know, let me ask, because obviously you said it wasn't televised. Did they actually record or take any videos or, or anything like that? Or was it just strictly like your just typical uh, award show at that current time? No, no it was just an, an award show, man. And it, like I said, it wasn't televised. I wish it would have been, man, because, um, you know, just being visual and being seen. And with that, you have, um, you know, all the YouTube and all the social media stuff. 
that can get played. But, um, you know, it, it was just all live back then. You know, it wasn't televised. But, you know, that was a pity. But, you know, it was still it still felt good to, to win, you know. And I got to say as well, it definitely would have been cool to see this, to at least have that at least video, not, 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 even if it's not televised, it's something recorded that way that's kind of uploaded it onto the internet in years to come for the right. newer generation to right. actually enjoy. Yeah, yeah. And actually, man, there, there was only one award, you know, it was three members in, in the group, and I actually do have the award. I do actually have the award. You know, you you would think they would have gave us three, but you know, <laughs> there was only one man, and um, I uh, I have it, I have it. And also, as well, in the year two thousand one, you actually did production work for K Special's twelve inch single, uh, "It's My Drug." I was wondering if you can actually tell our listeners a bit more about this particular project, and of course, what was it like just being able to work alongside K Special in the studio? Wow, DJ Moore, man, you you really do your homework, man, and, and you know your hip hop. <laughs> I must say, um, yeah, just you know, living in in France, man. Um, I did production work um, alongside you know DJing uh, parties and and clubs in Europe, but um, just working with with uh, K Special, man, was cool because actually I met them through um, their label owner. Her name was uh, Laura Dreyfus, and I actually worked with her dad at, um, um, uh, what was the label? It was called Sugar. The label was called Sugar. And uh, I worked at her jazz label, her dad's jazz label in France called Dreyfus Jazz. And, um, you know, we I met with Kate Special. It was two, it's two members of, in, the, in the group. And there was there was a language barrier because my French back then wasn't the best, but you know we we spoke through hip hop, you know we spoke through beats and and flow, and just being in the studio with them was, was very different than than do it all in Mr. Funky, but man we we made some some dope 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 songs man, and uh, the French public really uh really dug. Took a kind to it, and you know they soaked it up, man. And uh, no, nah, it was dope. It was dope working with K Special. And obviously, being in the studio with these two individuals, like, did, did, mm-hmm. at any point, did you need an actual individual to come in and kind of translate everything, or did you guys really just speak throughout the music? Man, well, actually, Laura Dreyfus, she spoke English and French, so she was kind of like the, the translator. You know, she was letting me know what what they were saying. I was telling them. Um, the direction of the song that I was, you know, trying to go in, and um, they would write the rhymes, and um, she would pretty much, you know, just tell me um, the vibe or what they they were talking about, you know, in the rhymes. If I didn't like something, I would, you know, tell her to change it or, you know. But, um, you know, she got the point across, and, uh, and uh, you know, we did the album, man, and, and, it, and it was, you know, did pretty good out there, did pretty good. I mean, you know what? I actually, I'm, I'm working on a, um, a documentary myself, and I've been documenting things since the early '90s, and I have a lot of um, of um, uh, video of when I was out in Europe, especially in, in Paris, France, and you know, I have footage of like when we did the video for "It's My Drug" with K Special, and. You know, I, man, I, I have so much stuff that I just want the world to see. And um, during this this video, man, this, this was crazy. I'm, I'm just going to keep it real short. But during this video, man, it, it, I forget his name, but he was a dope b-boy out in Paris. While per, while performing a breakdance move, he actually, man, he did a, a, a windmill and hit his head. Hit his head on like a, a, a concrete piece that was, you know, in the in the video. And it, it, it was just like, man, I, I have so much footage. And, um, you know, I, I know I went kind of into depth with that. But just to let you guys know that I, I'm working on this documentary, and I, I really do have footage that 
that needs to be seen, and I know you guys are going to love all of the uh, video footage that I do have, you know? And I, I have to ask, because obviously when you said how he how the individual hit his head, I, I have to know, man, is he, is he indeed okay? Like, did he actually, like, survive yes. that incident? Yes, 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 he, he is okay. But, again, man, it's, it's when, you, when you're doing these things, when you're doing, you know, li- even, I mean, live performances and traveling all over the place, all over the world, like, people don't realize, like, like these things are dangerous, you know? Going to places that you don't know and, and performing and, and crazy clubs, like, things really can get crazy, man, and you really have to have your, your, yourself and your team, you know, on point. Because it's not just, you know, uh, just shows and, and money and, and girls and having fun. and It's a lot of other things that, go, that goes with this, man, with this industry that a lot of people don't see, you know? And I got to say, I definitely agree with that. I was actually in Montreal for a, for a festival called Jackalope not too long ago, and they were actually doing uh, breakdancing events and whatnot, man. And I, I, know, I, I actually heard, unfortunately, I didn't see the incident, but I heard that actually a few individuals actually like was like twirled off the stage just because they weren't really looking at exactly what they were right. doing while they were performing. Yeah, man, yeah. Like, this stuff is dangerous, man. People don't realize, like... You know, and and when these guys are doing that, those moves and stuff, like you can break your arm, you can break your leg, you can break your neck. Like you know, it, it's serious business, man. So, you know, you just have to, um, you know, be on point and um, and, and be careful, really. And also as well, one of the Lords of the Underground albums that I have to touch base on, because in my personal opinion, Jazz, this album deserves so much more recognition than what it got. And you guys dropped this album on August 21st of 2007, where it was actually your guys' fourth studio album. Yeah. I was wondering if you guys can tell our listeners the story behind this album. And of course, like, why didn't it actually receive as much promotion as it should have? Because i got to say, this album was absolutely phenomenal. Oh, man, I appreciate that, man. And the album that you're talking about is, is House of Lords. Uh, correct, yes. House of the Lords, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's the House of Lords, man. Um, man, we did this album. Um, we did this album, man. I was living in, in Paris. Uh, Mr. Funky was living in North Carolina. And Do It All was living in North New Jersey. And... We actually did a couple of songs together um, in New Jersey, and but the rest was, you know, like I was send beats, and you know, we got a couple beats from uh, outside producers, and um, you know, do it all, and Mr. Funky knocked it out. But um, man, it, it man, that was a, that's a great question. It was a, 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 a independent label um, that that we had connected with, and he wanted to do something with us because he loved Lords of the Underground. And, uh, you know, and we just did it, man. So there wasn't, a, like, a heavy, you know, budget or promotion or anything behind it. It was just basically something for the fans, man, because they have, you know, they haven't heard from us in a while. So we were like, yeah, we need to just get something. Just feed the, feed the fans, man, you know? And, yeah, that, that album was dope, man. I, I must admit, that was a dope album. And if you don't have it, you can go check it out, you know, right now. It, you know, all on social media, iTunes and, and Spotify, all of that. So it's called House of Lords, Lords of the Underground. Yep. And I gotta say, my, my favorite song off that record is actually Slick Tuck. When I remember when that album actually dropped. Ow. And and it was actually the, the first I think it was like the for your guys' first album for like I think it was like almost eight eight or nine years. So when that dropped I was like, yeah. Man, this is yeah. sick. Some more Lords of the Underground. Yeah, man, I appreciate that. Wow, wow. My, my, well, I got a couple of favorites on on that album. Uh, I, I loved uh, Fab Fab Three, Fabulous Three. Um, I thought that was dope. Um, uh, Hum it out is another dope one, and uh, we performed some of those songs, man. You know, at live performances. Um, which, man, I, I would love to get out. Canada, Lords of the Underground show out in Canada. So promoters, if you're listening, man, we we still around, man. We still here. 
And uh, we would love to get out to Canada, man, let the people, you know, hear this great music that we have to offer. And I gotta say, I definitely agree. So if the promoters are listening, make sure you listen to the man himself and get your butts in gear and get yes. them down to Canada. We need this. Yes, yes. But actually, since you brought up shows, man, the one thing I have to bring up, that in 2012, Lords of the Underground actually first performed in Russia as part of the uh, Hip Hop Don't Stop event at the Soul City wow. Festival. I was wondering if you can actually just tell our listeners about this sorry, groundbreaking event. And of course, what was it like just performing for the very first time in the country of Russia? Wow, man. <laughs> you really do your homework, man. You Wow. Wow. Salute to you, man. Um, Russia is was great, man. We went to uh, St. Petersburg and um, also Moscow. Me, I prefer St. Petersburg more. Um, the the crowd was just electric, man, and they really know their hip hop. And just to be amongst um, the like the dopest break dancers, you know, in the world, man, was amazing. Like, these, these kids are doing things that are unimaginable, you know, these days. It's like, yeah, they, they really stepped the game up, man. And it was just such a great honor for them to um, want Lords of the Underground to perform, man, because they love Chief Rocker, man. That's like the breakdance anthem out there, man. And, you know, just for us to be able to perform out there was, was dope, man. We really had a ball out there. Yep. And I gotta say as well, like you know, just being able to perform in Russia, because like, I, I, it just proves how universal music is. Because obviously in Russia, not a lot of people speak English, so the fact that they actually like rock with you guys so hard, you know, and not being able to actually know what you guys are saying, it just proves how universal and just how powerful music yeah. really is. Yes, indeed, man. Yes, indeed. I mean, like I said, music. I mean, all across the globe, man. You might not speak with people with language but we speak through hip hop and that's that's worldwide definitely and one of the last lords of the underground t uh, questions i actually have because i do know in 2020 you guys actually dropped so legendary on february 21st of 2020 i have to ask do you guys uh, have any plans to actually do another group album in the future because i do know with do it all he's now a, he's now working working in pop, being a politician and whatnot so yeah. is he still mm -hmm. doing music or, or the is it the very first the very first uh artist to uh win the election uh so do it all is going to be in, in the um, in the books as the first rapper to win um, his election. You know there 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 were others before him, but everybody lost. And do it all is the first. Like this is huge. He's the first MC to be a, an elected official. Like this is huge, man. And I'm so proud of him. And of course, he's still. Um, He's a hip hopper, man. That you know that that will never go away. So, you know he's he's still he's still recording, and you know he's still he's still doing it, still doing it. We all are still doing it. Mr. Funky is doing his thing right now. He's out in Italy um, doing some songs with the band out there, and you know, of course, I just you know released my project. But uh, I mean, we, we're hip hoppers, man. We'll be doing this until the day we die. And speaking of your project, man, on August 19th of 2022, you actually release The Plain Dealer 2, which is actually a uh, second installment to the first album that actually came out a few right. years back. But I was wondering if you can actually tell our listeners a bit more about your most recently released album. And of course, where can we snag ourselves a copy of this monumental project today? Right. Okay, just real quick, I'm going to go back to your previous question about Soul Legendary. We actually didn't release the whole project. We released uh, "What's Up" that was featuring Onyx, and we shot a video for that. But we have we have a whole album of um, uh, "Lords of the Underground" produced by Snow Goons out of Germany, and we didn't release it yet. Um, we're thinking about this fall because we have a tour in Europe in December. So, you know, you guys might get the whole uh, project later this year. And so on to the Plain Dealer 2. Um, yes, I dropped that August 19th, man, and, and it's doing great, man. Uh, 
man, I'm so happy for the love that it's getting, the support it's getting, you know, all around the world. And just to let you know, if you don't have it, you know, I have some monumental MCs on this album, man. I have, of course, I have Do It All from Lords of the Underground. I got Geechee Sway from Camp Low. I got Young Z and Pace One from the Outsiders. I got my man Ed G from Ed G and the Bulldogs. I got Young Noble from the Outlaws that was down with Tupac. I got Planet Asia. I got Tara Van Poo. I got... I got Reek and Ill City. I got Big Twins from Queens Bridge. I got Sonny Jim from UK. I got my man Drastic, Nonfiction, and Dre Rock all from Cleveland, Ohio. I got my man, rest in peace to my man Joe Bananas. Rest in peace to my Uncle Marv. I got Curtis Soul on there. Also, I got my man Dick Spencer from Chicago, Spitting Fire. And last but not least, I have Supreme C. If you don't know Supreme C, go back and listen to Keepers of the Funk album. He was on a, a Lords of the Underground song called Never Faded, and he was the last MC to rock. I found Supreme C and got him on the album. So, man, I, man, I have, I even have my daughter, Gloria Colston, on the album. So... You know, you can check it out. Every it's everywhere. You can go to my my uh, Bandcamp DJ Lord Jazz dot Bandcamp dot com, or you can go to my website DJ Lord Jazz dot com, and you know Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, Title, all of that is everywhere. So you know, go check it out. Let me know what you think. And I got to say as well, my top three songs off this album, man, and I have to say this because it was so hard for me. I listened to the album like ten times already, and just picking, <laughs> picking right. three songs, man, it's just super hard. But I got to say, man, I, I got to go with uh, Come Get Some with Ed OG, They Don't Want Money, yeah. and of course, Sound the Alarm. Ah, uh, dope, 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 dope. Yeah, man, yeah, I'm I'm getting that a lot. Um, actually, I just finished shooting a video. Uh, for We Hip Hop featuring uh, Nonfiction and Drastic. Um, shot the video in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, uh, putting the finishing touches on, on the editing, and um, it should be out soon, so be on the lookout for that. I also have a remix contest. Um, the last day to enter was Friday, but um, I'm going to go live on my IG on Instagram that's at Lord Jazz, L-O-T-U-G, on September the 24th at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to go live and play all the remixes, and we're going to announce the um, the winner live on my IG. I have a couple of judges, too, that are going to uh, help judge. So be on the lookout for that, y'all. And also as well, I, I know we spoke about like the documentary that you that you have plans for, the European yeah. tour coming up, and of course all, all the other amazing things you've got in the works, but I have to ask, aside from all that, what is next for yourself, the legendary DJ Lord Jazz? Is there anything we happen to miss during tonight's broadcast, anything else you do still want to talk about or promote? Well, we still got you here live on 97.7 FM this evening. Yeah, man, well, I'm, I'm really just, I'm focusing on this plane dealer too for right now, but, um... Um, future projects, I'm working on my Lord Trilla too. That's with True Trilla. He's from the old 50 boys, and um, yeah, that's going to be a rocker also. And I'm also going to do an, an R&B album. And I'm, you know, I, I just want to let people know that I, I do all types and all styles of music. I'm not just stuck in, in hip-hop, you know. I'm, I'm a DJ. Um, I love all genres of music. And I believe you have to, to um, you know, to push push forward. Like you have to know your music, you know. So I'm gonna I'm working on an R&B like a neo soul, like dope beat. You remember how Mary J. Blige kind of was like back in the early '90s, the soulful loops with 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 banging drums and dope harmonies. I'm I'm doing things like that again. So be on the lookout for the uh, R&B album. And, um, you know, the book and the documentary, too. 
And also, Jazz, it's the time in the interview that I give a chance for the individual that does slide into the radio station airwaves. Just a chance to give, like, shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to, but most of all, your social media handles. That way the listeners can follow you yeah. and stay updated everything you got going on. But I hope they're already following the legendary DJ Lord, DJ Lord Jazz. They better already yeah. be doing that. Yeah, please, if you're not following, please follow me on IG at Lord Jazz L O T E G. Also, uh, subscribe to my um, website, djlordjazz.com. Um, the, the Facebook is DJ Lord Jazz L O T E G. Um, <clears throat> yeah, man, follow me. I follow you back. You know, uh, let you know what's going on with me and and what I got going on. And um, yeah, man, just uh, you know, stay stay on point. We got a lot of things cooking for y'all. And I got to say, first and foremost, Jazz, thank you so much again for just giving us a bit of your time here this evening and talking about some of these amazing old stories and, of course, talking about your brand new record that actually just dropped last month. And again, thank you so much for your time this evening as well. Thank you, man. And if y'all want to get merch, you can also hit my man Sincere up at underscore Sincere underscore 73. That's his IG. Hit him up for, for the Lord Jazz t shirt and um, pretty soon I'm going to have hats and, and everything like that. But for now, I have T-shirts. So if you want to support that, please hit him up and um, let him know that I sent you to him. All right? So if you want to get some dope uh, Lord Jazz tees you know, or Lords of the Underground tees also, please hit my man Sincere up at underscore Sincere underscore 73. All right? That's on live. That's on IG. I gotta say, definitely thank you so much again, Jazz. And of course, have yourself a phenomenal Sunday evening as well. I'm pretty sure down the line we definitely shall talk again soon. But for now, definitely have yourself a phenomenal night. Yes, sir. You too, man. I appreciate all the love and support. And uh, Canada promoters, man, get Lords of the Underground out there. If you can't afford Lords of the Underground, get DJ Lord Jazz to come up there for a set. <laughs> Let's go. I gotta say, I definitely agree with that. Hopefully, they, hopefully the promoters can afford all three of you guys. But like I, like, like you sure. said, at least get DJ Lord Jazz down there so he can spin them ones and twos. Yeah, man. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. But I definitely, again, though, Jazz, thank you so much, man. And if I don't talk to you before, then definitely to all three of you guys, have a phenomenal and safe European tour. All right. Appreciate that, man. Thanks for the, the love and the support, man, throughout the years. I really appreciate you. Hey, man, you are most certainly welcome, man. I'm going to keep supporting Lords of the Underground until my casket drops, man. Definitely. Thank you, bro. 